And she's back in the shop. Didn't even make it 100 miles. But the good news is it's not related to any of the repairs we made in the last video. She sprung a leak. Got a bad brake line. So we might as well go ahead and fix it. Well, let me try to show you guys where it was leaking. And just to be clear, I definitely did not just pinch off the brake line with a pair of vice grips. And then drive the truck 100 miles home with basically no front brakes in the dark while towing a trailer. Okay, did we all see that? So this crossover line is bad. It goes underneath of the engine on the cross member here. It goes from the driver's side brake hose to the passenger side brake hose. Anyway, we gotta replace it. It's gonna look kinda weird because I've done this out of order and I already replaced this line that goes up to the master cylinder. So we've gotta get that thing out of there. And I'm gonna try using a line wrench. It's pretty crusty. So when that doesn't work, we'll just cut the brake line off. Except that's the wrong side. Stupid Fords. Okay, let's try this one. Nope, that's still the wrong size. Alright, anyway, so when that doesn't work, we'll cut the brake line off and use a socket. I think we got room to reach in there with a the socket. Oh, what the thunder? I know it's 7 16 Cross your fingers. Oh, are you kidding me? Well, I broke the line, but at least it's coming out. Good deal. And you got a lot of options when you're not reusing the line. I mean, any way you can chisel it out of there is fine. So we'll just let this one twist off and be golden. There we go. And we may not be able to reuse that one. Hey, what do you know? Not too bad. But the one on the ABS valve won't be that easy. Okay, let me grab a diaper because that's going to spill oil pretty much everywhere. And then I don't know if you guys can see it, but. See that old guy right there? That is a brass compression fitting. That is super dangerous and illegal in most states. So we're gonna deal with that too. So here's the other end of the line right here and it comes down to this rear ABS valve. So this generation of trucks only has ABS on the rear axle. Which is Pretty much useless. There we go. They were getting lucky so far. Uh, there's some kind of a clip up there I'll have to undo. And then we can sneak that thing out of there. There comes the oil. So making and replacing a brake line is a, a pretty straightforward job. I'd say it's well within the capabilities of your average you know, DIY type guy. And there are no points for making it pretty. All that matters is that we have, you know, a good connection here and a good connection here. <laughs> However you get the rest of it done is, is pretty much up to you. I've seen some just horrible hack job brake lines and they'll work just fine. So here's the broken brake line and we need to replicate that. And I'm going to use some of this NICOP brake line material. So it's a, a copper and nickel alloy. And it's basically almost as strong as steel, but it's super easy to work with. You can bend this very easily with just your hands without kinking it. Uh, you don't need to use special tools like this brake line bending tool. You know, it's very forgiving. It's also corrosion resistant. I've never seen a, a NICOP brake line actually fail after it was installed. Uh, the only reason, the only reason not to use this stuff is it's kind of expensive. It's about, 
think I pay about a dollar seventy a foot for this material, so it's uh, you know a fair amount more expensive than the regular steel. And actually, you know this is three sixteenths brake line, so the the regular steel really isn't too bad to work with in the three sixteenths size. Uh, but when you get up into the bigger sizes, like five sixteenths for fuel lines, the NICOP is a lot easier to work with than steel. So there's only two original brake lines left on this truck. There's one that goes down from the master cylinder to the rear ABS valve and this one that goes across underneath the front axle. And then we're also going to replace this one right here that goes from the master cylinder down to that brake line in the front because it's got one of these Scotty Kilmer approved compression fittings on it. I have no idea why. This is actually illegal in my state. You cannot use compression fittings on a brake line. It's just not done. Now there are some high pressure compression fittings like your lock fittings that are rated for the, the, the pressure that we're talking about here but I don't think they're like SAE approved for automotive use. Anyway, just flare it and use a union. Uh, I think I've got one over here. Yeah, just flare it and use one of these unions and that's the approved way to join two brake lines. Anyway, I'm going to bend this up out of the NICOP material and we'll stuff it back in there. Uh, I would say we're not going to be able to reuse this this uh, shield deal here. It's just like a spring that fits over top of the brake line. It's supposed to protect it from abrasion, but it's pretty crusty. I don't think we'll ever get it off of there. So just forget about that. Well, I think that's close enough for me. And we can tweak it around once we get it put back on the truck. No big deal. Okay, the last thing we have to do is flare the end of our brake line. So we're gonna use a regular flaring tool, but it has this double flaring die. So this is gonna kinda roll the end of the tube over before we, before we flare it. So we'll get a double thickness on the flare. Now, my experience with this NICOP line is it's actually a little bit more difficult to flare than the normal steel brake lines. And actually it can be a lot more difficult to flare if you don't know what you're doing. So I would say one of the biggest things you can do to help yourself is to get a good quality flaring tool. So I'll give you a little bit of a comparison between these two. So this one here is a blue point double flaring tool that I've had since Christ was a cowboy. I don't know if I bought it new or if it was used when I got it, but this is a, a very nice professional quality tool. All the edges are smooth. All the machining is absolutely perfect. This thing grips the, the brake line without compressing it or leaving any kind of a, you know, a, a chowdery mark on the surface. Now compare that to this El Cheapo tool that I bought. I actually bought this because I lost the little double flaring die from my old blue point set. So I thought, hey, I'll just buy a whole set, you know, a whole flaring kit. Nice to be have. You know, it might be nice to have a, a spare, but this thing is total junk. Look at the machining right there in the die surface where it forms the flare. I mean, it looks like somebody just chewed that out with a pair of dentures. And the 3 16 is probably the worst. I don't know, the quarter isn't much better, but they're all pretty terrible. They also got the inside diameter wrong. If you clamp this down on a piece of 3 16 you'll end up with a big burr right here at the parting line between the tool. Also, it's kind of weeble wobbly this way, which makes it very difficult to get a good square flare. So, yeah, this thing, total junk. You know, the blue point tool, when you put this thing together, it's rock solid. Anyway, let's make a, uh, let's make a flare here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to poke our line through the flaring tool just like so. We're going to tighten up these wing nuts. And they're made, and these wing nuts are made so you can put a tool on them and really get them tight because you don't want the line to slip.
Okay, we'll take our double flaring die, put a little bit of oil on it, slip that down into the end of the tube. Okay, now the big thing I've noticed with the NICOP line, you have to be absolutely certain that the line is straight all the way through the, the dies here. And if you have any kind of a bend or, you know, it's a little bit crooked where it was cut and this little double flaring die wants to, to rock, you know, or, or doesn't come down squarely, you're going to get an offset or a weird shaped flare. And when you go to do the second part of the flare, it's not going to, it's not going to work right. So just run this down all the way. like so okay now we can remove the double flaring die and what we want is for the the hole in the middle of this thing to be exactly centered and it looks pretty decent might be a little bit offset towards me but I think it'll still work And then we're just going to run down here like a normal single flare. And you don't have to go bananas with this because this NICOP line is pretty soft. So you'll actually, you know, basically mushroom it out if you aren't careful. Okay, that looks pretty good. I decided it would be easier just to go ahead and make a whole new line for the front brakes and I went ahead and put the little the little spring of a thing in there too so it kind of needs something to take up that slack between the body and the frame and it really didn't have that before so I'm pretty sure the the factory line would have had the, the curly Q here so here's our new brake line all bent up ready to go in I had to use one new nut because this one's pretty crusty we could probably save it you know just by drilling the old line out of it but I had a new one so let's go ahead and use that okay there's our brake line routed and I reused the original clips there just make sure the lines not you know obviously rubbing against something on the frame because you can rub through them and everything's buttoned up here at the hose one thing I like to do is put a little bit of anti-seize on the actual line itself before I put the nut on and then put a little bit on the threads of the nut just to give yourself a fighting chance for when you have to take those back apart. Okay, that's it. I think every brake line on this truck has now been replaced. Uh, the hose is our original, but all the hard lines have been replaced. So we are going to have to bleed the brakes real quick, and then we should be done. Help has arrived. Firefighters. Let's go. Very excited. Yeah, very excited. Okay, all you have to do is push the brake pedal. <laughs> What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. It's a it's a manual. So push the brake pedal. Right now? No. Not yet. No. Normally speaking, I'd rather eat my own leg than mess with the bleed screw on a 25-year-old Illinois truck. But I'm not too worried because the bottom side of this truck is so pristine. I bet they'll just come right out. And uh, we don't have to worry about spilling brake fluid on the floor. Okay. Okay, cross your fingers. Takes a 3 8 Because this is an old body style Ford. And of course it's a super frustrating mix of inch and metric fasteners. Oh boy, please don't break off.
Okay, I got the bleeder freed up. We just had to resize it to nine millimeter. Uh, go ahead and push the brake pedal down. Keep pushing. Okay, let up. Push it down again. Okay, let up. Now push it down again. Let up. Push down again. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, the passenger side was much better. All right, push the brake pedal down. Okay, let up. Now push it down again. Let up. Push down again. Let up. Push down again. Okay, does it feel more firm? Okay. Now we can finally bleed the rear brakes and they give us a nice bleed port right here on this ABS valve. I don't think there's any reason to bleed it at the rear brake wheel cylinders. We're just gonna do it right here. Okay, push the brake pedal down. Okay, let up. Now down again. Okay, now up. Down again. Up. Down again. Down again. Okay, that's pretty good. I think we're done. Got a lot of brake fluid. It's just eating the paint right off my brand new oil filter. We'll install these mint original head caps. Should be good to go. Okay, I think that's it. Now, unless your brake pads are brand new, avoid the temptation to fill the master cylinder all the way up to the maximum full mark. In fact, I may have overfilled this one. When you go to replace the brake shoes or brake pads, you're gonna compress the wheel cylinders or the calipers, and you're gonna raise the level of the, the fluid in the master cylinder reservoir here. So leave yourself some space. Okay guys, that's it. We got rid of the last two factory steel brake lines. And we also got rid of our, our pending lawsuit here. And the old girl is fit for duty. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, if you guys are looking for a brake flaring tool, instead of buying the old school double flaring tool like I have, you might want to look into what's called an inline brake flaring tool. I don't have one personally, but I have used one before. And they're pretty slick. I'll put a link in the, uh, the comment section down there. You guys can check it out. They're not, not that much more expensive than a good you know, old school style flaring tool, and they work a lot better. They're a lot better for this soft NICOP line. And if you don't want to mess with the NICOP line, just get this epoxy coated steel line. And like I said, it, it's not too bad to work with in the 3 16 size. It's just those big ones where you get into trouble. All right, guys, thanks for watching and Happy New Year's. I got all the air worked out of the Huey system on this engine. Let me show you how well it fires up now. I'll give you guys a little bit of a teaser. Maybe we'll talk about all this stuff in the next video. See if anybody can identify that engine just from this view right here.